in your word. Jesus, watch me, Lord. In your word. Will you watch me? Right. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon, Israel, spiritually and physically. It is good to be here in the house of the Lord. I'm glad to be here in Phoenix from Dallas. My first, well, actually my second time down here in Phoenix years ago, back in, I believe it was 2014, me and Brother Justin were discussing. Um, I was just now beginning to read uh, for the Lord. Yes, and sir. Justice was reading as well. And, uh, <laughs> And I just see how the Lord has grown the body of, of, of Israel, and, and I just am so glad to be here. So today, um, again, um, happy Sabbath to everybody. We're going to go ahead and open up with the reading of the law. So if everybody will turn to your Bibles or Exodus chapter 20, we're going to open up to the reading of the law. Exodus chapter 20, we're going to pick it up at verse 1 when you get there, my brother. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Amen. And showing mercy unto thousands of, the, of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Amen. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. Amen. Praise God in Jesus' name. And we read these commandments every Sabbath day because we understand and believe that they are ordained unto life. Let's flip over to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. We're going to pick it up at verse 13. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. We're going to pick it up at verse 13. We're going to read 13 and 14. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read it. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Some of the matter, brother. The whole matter. The whole matter. Keep reading. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. It's the whole duty of man. Keep reading. For God shall bring every work into judgment. Some of your work, Brother Justin. Every work. Every work. For God shall bring every work into judgment. Keep reading. With every secret thing. That's right. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. Remember that. That's very, very important for every single person in this building to remember. The Lord said he going to bring every work into judgment That's right. with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. You cannot hide from this God. 
So you better make sure you're measuring up. And we're going to deal with that a little bit today. Let's go over to Revelation chapter 22. We're going to take our time today. Y'all got something to do? Nope. Y'all got something to do a little later on before the sun go down? No, sir. Hey, Amen. We're going to take our time <laughs> then. <laughs> Revelation chapter 22. We're going to pick it up at verse 14, my brother. When you get there, go ahead and read it. Blessed are they that do his commandments, uh -huh. that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Keep reading. For without our dogs and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh the lie. He say, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. So we have read the commandments in the beginning of the Bible, in the middle of the Bible, and now in the last book of the Bible. So don't let nobody sit there and tell you that the commandments are done away with mm. or they cannot get you in eternal life if you don't keep if you don't keep them because you have to keep them. Right. That's right. You got to keep them commandments of God. So remember, the commandments of God are ordained to life. You have to believe in Jesus and keep them commandments. Yes. Sir. Well, once again, my name is Brother Harris. If I didn't introduce myself already, reading for me today is going to be Brother Justice. And we're going to deal with a lesson today entitled, Examine Thyself, Ye Servant of God. Examine Thyself, Ye Servant of God. See, today and every day, we have to examine ourselves to see if our actions are pleasing in the sight of God or not. Whether we're servants of God or servants of Satan. Whether we're true worshipers or not. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to examine ourselves. So this lesson is broken down into three parts. The first thing we're going to deal with is the war within. The war that goes on right between your ears. Mm. It's a war every day. So we got to deal with that today. OK, then we're going to look at denying ourselves and what it truly means to be a servant. Denying ourselves and what it truly means to be a servant. And then lastly, we're going to look at the rebuild. Because after you take a beat down, and you might take a little bit of a beat down today, right? <laughs> after you take that beat down, you have to go and you go through some trials and tribulations, you have to build yourself back up to make it, to walk this thing, to endure all the way into the end. All right? Okay. So let's get into some foundation of scripture. Let's go over to Matthew chapter 7. We're dealing with ourselves today. We're going to examine ourselves. So don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Pick up that little mirror out your purse if you're a sister. <laughs> if you go to the restroom and you're a brother and you see that big mirror in the bathroom, look at yourself. Yes, Because that's what we're dealing with today. All right. Matthew chapter 7. We're going to pick it up at verse 1, my brother. Matthew chapter 7. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. Still here just a few pages. Want everybody to get there. We ain't got nothing else to do. Y'all already said it, so I'm going to take my time. <laughs> Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. Go ahead and read it, brother. Judge not that ye be not judged. He said, judge not that ye be not judged. Keep reading. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. He said, for with what judgment you judge... You shall be judged, and with what measure ye make, you meet, it shall be measured to you again. Remember that. If you're going around here judging other folks' walk, worrying about what everybody else is doing, and you, your walk is messed up yourself, <laughs> the Lord going to judge you the same exact way. You better start focusing on yourself before you start trying to help somebody else out. Maybe. Think about it. Read verse 3, my brother. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye? But consider it's not the beam that is in thine own eye. He said, why you behold the moat that is in your brother's eye or in your sister's eye, and you're not considering that big old beam that's in your eye because you messed up. <laughs> you got to get yourself together. If you're not keeping the Sabbath right, why are you worried about everybody else? If you're not keeping the commandments to the best of your ability, keeping all of them because that's required. Yes, sir. Why are you worried about somebody else? If you're still eating pork and everything else 
putting everything on the dinner table. <laughs> Why are you worried about somebody else? Make it plain, bro. Get yourself together. That's what we're dealing with today. Examine ourselves. Verse 4, my brother, read it. Or how would thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the moat out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. How you going to do that? You can't do that. You got to get yourself together before you can help anybody else out. Finish that, my brother, at verse 5. Thou hypocrite. That's what you are. You're a hypocrite. Keep reading. First cast out the beam out of thine own eye. That's right. And then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. He say, first cast out the beam out of your eye. Then you can start seeing clearly to start helping somebody else out. That's Please. what we are required to do as servants of God. Examine yourself. Get yourself right, my brother. First Corinthians chapter 11. Y'all with me? It's going to be a little quiet in here today, and that's okay, because it'd be like that sometime. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to read one verse here. We're just setting a foundation. First Corinthians chapter 11. One verse. Verse 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we're going to read one verse here, verse 31. Still here just a few pages, want everybody to get there. We're going to take our time. Go ahead and read it, brother. For if we would judge ourselves, uh -huh. we should not be judged. <laughs> you see what Paul said here? He said, for if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. See, if you constantly correcting yourself, Making sure you are correct, you, tru you truly don't even have to say nothing to nobody else. Guess what? Because people watching your walk. Yes, sir. They watching what you do. They watching right. how you talk. They watching how you move. And if you're doing it in secret, if you're moving a little snakish in secret, guess who else is watching? <laughs> guess who watching you? Because we just read that ain't nothing is going to get away from God. Every work is going to be brought into judgment, whether it's good or whether it's evil. So somebody is always watching you, whether yes, it's somebody in this physical sense, your brother or your sister, your pe the brothers and sisters that are out there in the world that we should be bringing into this body. Mm. Or, and we all know that God is watching you with all them angels and them eyes. Yeah. So he said, for if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Romans chapter 12, we're dealing with ourselves today. Nobody else. Get yourself right. Romans chapter 12. We're going to read one verse here. Verse 3, Romans chapter 12. We're going to read verse 3 here. Just setting a foundation. Go ahead and read it. For I say... Through the grace given unto me. That's right. To every man that is among you. That's right. Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. He said, for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly of, than he ought to think. We ain't nobody. You ain't better than nobody up in here. Get yourself together. We all a work in progress. We going to deal with that. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. He said, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. But what else? But to think soberly. But think soberly. According as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. That soberly that he's talking about thinking is physically. Can't be getting drunk around here. Stumbling all crazy. And there ain't nothing wrong with getting you a little sip here and there. <laughs> right? But you can't be stumbling around here. But also, more importantly, you got to think soberly, spiritually minded. He say, but to think soberly, according as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. Mm -hmm. Again, we are all a work in progress. Yes, Let's sir. go over to Ephesians chapter 6. Because we have to understand what we're dealing with here. We are dealing with the war within. The war within. Y'all still with me? Yes, sir. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6. As soon as I get there, we're going to pick it up at verse 10. We're dealing with a war within. Ephesians 
chapter 6, pick it up at verse 10. Go ahead and read it, my brother. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's right. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And you need all of that armor. You need every last bit of it. He said, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And you can read that on your own time, but you need all of it. Verse 12, this is what we want. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, uh -huh. but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The next time you are dealing with your brother or your sister and they acting a little funny bunny with you, look behind the person. Find out what they what they mind really is on. You can tell by their conversation. That's right. You can tell by watching somebody what they really about if you're really looking with your spiritual eyes on. Because we're not wrestling against that flesh and blood. And knowing that, you got to count up the cost. Why is that? Because it is a battle within your mind every single day. You got to count up the cost. If you really want to make this thing, you got to win that war. Let's go over to Luke chapter 14. Let's take a look at it. Luke chapter 14. It's a battle within your mind every single day, y'all. You got to wake up with the right mindset. You got to rebuke that devil every single day. Sometimes you got to rebuke yourself because that That's man right. is trying to raise up every single day. That old person. That's right. He's trying to rise up every single day and trying to knock you off. Teach, brother. Romans chapter 14. We're going to pick it up at verse 25. Romans. I mean, excuse me. I'm saying Romans, Lord. Help me, Lord. Luke uh -huh. chapter 14. I'm going to get it together. So Luke chapter time, 14, brother. we're going to pick it up at verse 25. I'm looking dead at it. Luke chapter 14, <laughs> we're going to pick it up at verse 25. This is Jesus talking to the multitudes here, counting up the cost. Go ahead and read it, brother. And there went great multitudes with him. And he turned and said unto them, uh -huh. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yeah, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, is the Lord telling you that you need to truly hate your mother and your father and your children and everybody else? No. Absolutely not, right? But he's saying here, if you're putting anything before God, if you're putting anything above serving God, you cannot be his disciple. Make it plain. You bro. can't do it. You have to put God first in everything you do. More important than your wife. More important than your mother, your father, and anybody else that tries to come between you and your God. Read verse 20. Uh, where are we at, brother? 27? Yes, sir. Read it. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doeth not deny yourself. If you can't deny yourself, because a lot of things come up and we start trying to think, you know, oh, mm, I really want to do this. But you got to ask yourself, does it line up with the word of God? Yes, sir. Does it line up with my walk and is it keeping me on that straight and narrow path? That's what you got to always ask yourself, because not if you can't deny yourself and you start putting yourself before God, you're not winning the war. Teach, brother. It's a war every single day. Verse 28, brother, read it. For which of you intended to build a tower, sit it not down first and count it the cost. That's right. Whether he have sufficient to finish it. Keep reading. Less happily. After he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold, it began to mock him. And they're going to mock you. You come up in this thing, boy, you ready. You are on fire for the word of God. You're reading your Bible every single day. You're out witnessing every single day, trying to get people to come into the truth. You're trying to tell your family, your friends and everybody. And then all of a sudden you get a little weak in the faith. And then you fall back. You know what your mama going to say? You know what your father going to say? You know what big mama going to say? I told you. 
<laughs> I told you that what that foolishness that you was a part of wasn't it. Come on back over here to East Side Baptist Church. <laughs> huh? What we feel with the Holy Ghost and we're shouting all up and down. I, I see, I told you that coat that you was a part of wasn't about nothing. Mm. They're going to mock you. That's what they say, bro. That's why when you come into this thing, you have to be ready and willing to endure all the way into the end, no matter what happens. Yes, sir. It's a war every single day, and you have to make it. You got to count up the cost. He's read 29 again, brother. Let's happily, after he had laid the foundation uh -huh. and is not able to finish it, all that behold it began to mock him. That's right. What they saying? Saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. You started that thing. You started this walk. You were so happy about it, but you weren't able to finish. You right back in there celebrating Christmas like everybody else. You the first one up under the tree now. <laughs> huh? That's what's going to happen. <laughs> If you're not prepared mentally and spiritually, you got to be ready to count up the cost. Jeez, so when brother. you get up in this thing, you got to be ready to fight for your life every day. Man. Skip down to verse 33, brother, and read that. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. If you're not willing to forsake everything you got, you cannot be the Lord's disciple. See, you have to be fully in or fully out mm -hmm. because the Lord doesn't deal with a lukewarm Christian. No, he don't. He don't deal with no lukewarm Christian. He rather for you to be, he rather for you to be hot or cold because if you're in the middle and you just tread that line, he's going to spew you out. Yes, sir. He tell you, uh, in, in uh, some of the scripture, he tell you, look, when I come back and you wicked, I want you to be wicked still. Mm, yeah. You know why? Because I got a spot for you. But if you're going to be righteous and you're going to fight every single day for your life and you're going to examine yourself every single day to make sure that you're on the right path, I got a kingdom for you mm -hmm. and a yes, new sir. body for you, a spiritual body that's going to be just like mine. Praise God. Can't be lukewarm. Let's look at something else. Let's go over to Proverbs chapter 14. Let's go over to Proverbs chapter 14. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. Amen. Proverbs chapter 14. We're looking at ourselves today. The war within. Proverbs chapter 14. We're going to read one verse here. Verse 12. Proverbs chapter 14. We're going to read one verse here. Verse 12. When you get there, my brother... Go ahead and read it. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. See, there is a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is the way or the ways of death. It seems right. That's what the Lord tells us in Proverbs chapter 3. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart mm -hmm. and lean not into your own mm -hmm. understanding. Yes, sir. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Mm -hmm. You got to trust in the Lord with all of your heart. You have to acknowledge him in situations that you think may be small and the ones that we know that are gigantic. You have to ask God if this is the way that you want me to go or not. Mm. Every day, don't lean on your own mind because you ain't going to win if you lean on your own mind. <laughs> we flesh. This thing is trying to kill you. Yes, sir. Every day. Acknowledge the Lord. Let's go over to Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. We're going to get an example of something that may have seemed right but could have easily meant death. Let's get an example of something that may have seemed right, but could have easily meant death. Job chapter 1. You got to win the war, y'all. Are y'all prepared to win that war? Yes, sir. Job chapter 1. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. We're going to look at the magnitude of what Job went through and his mindset through everything that he went through. Job chapter 1. Pick it up at verse one. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read it. There was a man in the land of Uz 
whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Just to spell that lie that you can't. Oh, ain't nobody can be perfect in the world. <laughs> Huh? Can't nobody be perfect. You hear that all the time. Yeah, Ain't yeah. nobody perfect. Well, we just read right here. There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright. One that feared God. And he didn't deal with no evil. Keep reading. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. That's right. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. Well, Job had that old Amazon money. <laughs> huh? Just to put it in today's time, he had that Walmart money. Yeah, yeah. Huh? <laughs> Good greed, Tesla money. <laughs> Job was the man, the biggest man of the East. Make it right, play, brother. He had his substance was, he had 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she asses, a very great household. The Lord was blessing him all around physically, right? Yes, sir. Read verse 4. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. Keep reading. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. Mm. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. How many mother and fathers we got out there? How many mother and fathers do we have out there? I know I'm one. Mm -hmm. We need to take heed to this. Yes, sir. This is a great example right here. Job said, and it was so when the days of their feasting were going about that Job sent, he sanctified his children. He rose up early in the morning. He offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all, which was 10, right? And Job said, it made that, it made that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their mind. So Job did this continually. We need to pray for our children. Yes, sir. This world that we live in is wicked. Yeah, it is. They trying, it's trying to kill you. It's trying to kill our children. Every time you turn around and look at something wicked going on. Yeah, it is. This, this sodomite thing that's going on in this world right now is running rapid. Pray for your children. In Jesus' name, continually Amen. take heed to that. Verse 6, brother. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. That's right. And Satan came also among them. Keep reading. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. He said, Where are you coming from, Satan? So the righteous angels came to present themselves before the Lord, which are the sons of God. And then Satan came also among them. And where is he at? He going to and fro in the earth, and he walking up and down in it, seeking whom he may devour. He trying to eat you up. This is why you have to gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and you got to hope until the end. Yes, sir. You got to fight for your life until the end. Because some of us can get into some black holes, and then we just start crying out to the Lord and don't see no up from down, and we start falling back. Mm. You got to hold on to this thing. Gird yourself up and hope all the way unto the end. Where we at, brother? Verse 8? Verse 8. Read it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job? Has thou considered my servant Job? Keep reading. That there is none like him in the earth, mm. a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. What kind of servant you got to be for the Lord to offer you up to Satan? What kind of servant do you have to be for the Lord to offer you up? Have you considered my servant justice? Have you considered my servant, brother Jedediah? Mm -hmm. What kind of servant do you have to be to be offered up to Satan? And the Lord is doing it. Mm -hmm. You got to be working on you got to be working on your walk every single day. Yes, sir. You got to be a perfect and upright man or woman and walking in the word of the Lord every fun. day. He said, has thou considered my servant? Job, keep finish that, brother. Or Read not. eight again. Read eight again. And the Lord said unto Satan, has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God, and eschew with evil. Keep reading. 
Then Satan answered the Lord and said, The Job fear God for not. Uh -huh. Has not thou made an hedge about him and about his house? Keep reading. And about all that he hath on every side. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. Boy, Satan talking, boy. And he said, haven't you just, you made a hedge about him and about his house on every side? You done blessed the work of his hand, increased his house, his substance, and increased itself in the land? Haven't you been protecting him? Read, uh, read verse 11, brother. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. Keep reading. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. So the Lord gave Satan permission to put his hands on, on Job a little bit. He said, everything, you can do anything you want to do to him, just don't kill him. Let's keep reading. Where we at, brother? Verse 13. Read it. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing, and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yeah, they have slain thy servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Mm, here come the beginning of this turmoil. The beginning of some tribulation. The beginning mm. of the war. Can he win it? Let's keep reading. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, the fire of God is fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep mm. and the servants are consumed and, and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Lord, skip down to verse 18 and continue. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in the eldest brother's house. Mm. And behold, there came a great wind of from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are dead and I only am escaped alone to he tell said, thee. While we was, he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, thy sons and thy daughters mm. were eating and drinking wine in the elder's brother house and now they all dead. Can you win that war? Mm. Think about it. Something falling on you now, it's getting real heavy, y'all. It's getting real dark now. You done lost all your substance. You done lost everything that you done built and worked for. Now, it's starting to touch your children. What you gonna do? You gonna give up? You gonna walk away from the Lord? You gonna forget about how the Lord has already blessed you and what he's brought you from? Mm. What you gonna do? Where we at, brother? Verse 20. Read it. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell upon the ground and worshiped. He did what? After all of that now, he said he rent his mantle, he shaved his head, and he got down on his knees and he worshiped. Can you worship in all of that? Mm. Can you thank God when everything is going left and it's been going right all of this time. Can you fall down and thank your God in the midst of the turmoil? Think about it. Keep reading, brother. What do you say? And said, naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. Mm. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He said, naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Finish that in verse 22, brother. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Can you win that war? In all of that, Job did not sin, nor charge God foolishly. Flip on over to Job chapter 2, because Satan, he's still not done. He going to come before the Lord again. Job chapter 2, we're going to pick it up at verse 2. Can you win that war? We're dealing with the war within here. Job chapter 2, pick it up at verse 2, my brother. Go ahead and read it. And the Lord said unto Satan, from whence comest thou? Where you coming from, Satan? Keep reading. And Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and walking and from walking up and down in it. That's right. See, Satan is after you every 
day of your life. And you got to win that war every single day of your life. That's why the Lord tells us to take no thought for the morrow. For the morrow should take the thought, so for the morrow should take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient uh, is the day until the day is the evil thereof. Yes, sir. Let's read verse 3, brother. And the Lord said unto Satan, As thou considered my servant Job, and there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man. Amen. One that feareth God and escheweth evil. And still he holdeth fast his integrity. And still he holdeth fast his integrity. Keep reading. Although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. Ain't done nothing wrong. He ain't done nothing wrong. He keeping the commandments of God. He believing in Jesus. He keeping the dietary law. He making sure his children are taken care of. He treating his wife right. Everything is going swell. He ain't done nothing wrong. But the Lord is allowing him to go through these trials and tribulation to be tested. And we have to remember that because the Lord may allow you to get tested. Yes, sir. The Lord just can't let you get into the kingdom of God and give you all power and you hadn't been tested. Mm. You still may be wicked a little bit. Teach, brother. Think about it. Where we at, brother? Verse 4. Read it. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin. Skin for skin. Yeah, all that a man hath will he give for his life. Keep reading. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. Well, Satan be talking that big talk, don't he? Yeah, he do. <laughs> Read verse 6. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. Save his life. You can touch him now. You can touch his body now, but save his life. Keep reading. So when Satan forth from the presence of the Lord, and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his feet unto his crown. Mm. And he took him a pot shirt to scrape himself withal, and he sat down among the ashes. So Job now, now Satan began to start touching on his body a little bit. He breaking him out with all these big old boils. If anybody had a boil in here, them things ain't fun, right? <laughs> breaking out with all boils all over your body. He's scraping himself with a pot. And now let's see what his wife got to say about it. Verse 9, brother. Then said his wife unto him. Does thou still retain thy integrity? Man, you still retaining your integrity? Keep reading. Curse God and die. Curse God and die, brother. Husband, you done lost your children. You done lost everything we done built. And what do we got to show for it now? You still serving that God? Mm. Huh? The God you claimed is the God, the creator of everything? You still going to serve him? Mm. Curse God and die. I feel scared a little bit saying that. Even though we read. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, to the average brother or sister, right, that's out there in the world that don't know no better, that may be feasible. It may seem right. Right? Read verse 10, brother. But he said unto her. What did he say? Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaking. You're speak. speaking as one of, one of the foolish women speaking. Keep reading. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? Mm. In all this, did not Job sin with his lips? He said, what? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this, did not Job sin with his lips? Can you win that war? Mm. What if Job didn't have the right mindset? What if Job just decided to fall back in that moment? Because it, it seemed feasible. You done lost everything you had. Even got down to your children. And we know how much, boy, we love our children. <laughs> I'm the mamas out there. You mo we love our children. Don't hurt my baby now. Huh? Mm. Romans chapter 12. Y'all still with me? Yes, sir. Amen. We're dealing with ourselves today. Romans chapter 12. What if Job didn't have the right mindset through all of that, y'all? And he decided to fall back. But he maintained his integrity through it all. Romans chapter 12. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. Romans chapter 12. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read it. I beseech you, bre therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you, pre that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It's your reasonable service. 
He said, I beseech you, I encourage you, I urge you, brother. Therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service every day. Not just when you feel like it, not when everything going good, every single day through the good times and the bad times. Wake up and examine yourself. Yes, sir. Make sure you're still on the right path. Mm. Verse 2, brother. And be not conformed to this world. And don't be conformed to this world. Keep reading. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That what? That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That ye may prove. The Lord is trying to prove you. To see if you are really about this thing or not. He know you. I can't give you a free ride. It ain't no selling grace cards around here. <laughs> you got to prove yourself to this God. So now we've witnessed what we're up against. We've gotten an example of how grounded we must be to handle this spiritual wickedness. So let's transition into denying ourselves and what it means to be a servant. Let's go over to Luke chapter 9. Because you got to deny yourself. I'm going to tell you that right now. Boy, this flesh want everything. Yeah, it do. It want it all. And having it all sometimes will get you cut off. Yes, sir. Luke chapter 9. We're going to deal with denying ourselves. We're going to pick it up at verse 23. Luke chapter 9. Pick it up at verse 23, still here, just a few pages. Go ahead and read it. Luke 9, chapter, uh, Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Let's read it. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. He said, if any, he said unto them all, if any man will come after me, let himself that take up his cross and deny himself. How, much, how many times? Daily. daily. You got to deny yourself daily. Mm. Not when you want to. Not when you everything is right and everything going. Deny yourself daily. Mm. Put God first daily. Every single day. Verse 24, read it. For whosoever will save his life shall lose That's it. That's right. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake. The same shall save it. If you're willing to give up this particular life that you're living, you can save your life in the end. If you truly put God before every move that you make and you acknowledge God in every move you make, you can win the war within. You can save yourself in the end. Right. He said, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. Verse 25. For what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? What is it going to profit you if you gain the whole world but you lose your soul? What is it going to profit you? You get everything you want in this life, but you end up losing your soul. We're mm. going to be looking down there. Hold on, is that, is that brother Ricky in the, in the line over there? Is that sister is that sister Tanya out there standing in that line? Lord, have mercy. Lord forbid. But you got to get yourself together right now to enter in that first resurrection. That's what you want. Deej, brother. Ultimately, you want to enter into the kingdom of God if you have to stand mm -hmm. through the line. But who want to take that chance? <laughs> what does it profit you if you gain the whole world and lose your soul. It don't profit you nothing. So what are we denying ourselves from? Let's go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. What are we denying ourselves from? Let's take a look at that. We're dealing with ourselves today. We're examining ourselves today. Y'all still with me out there? Yes, sir. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We're going to pick it up at verse 9. What are we denying ourselves from? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, we're going to pick it up at verse 9. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Ain't that simple? Know ye not 
that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Don't you know that? <laughs> if you unrighteous, if you ain't keeping the commandments of God, and we're going to look at some additional stuff here as well. If you are unrighteous, you will not enter, enter, enter into the kingdom of God. Let's keep reading, brother. Be not deceived. Don't be deceived. Neither fornicators. Neither fornicators. Nor idolaters. Nor idolaters. Nor adulterers. Nor adulterers. Nor effeminate. Nor effeminate. Nor abusers. L-B-T. I came. L-B-T-Q. What? Uh, <laughs> Alphabet. Alphabet. <laughs> Alphabet. Nor effeminate. Keep reading. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. That's right. Keep reading. Nor thieves. Nor thieves. Nor covetous. Nor covetous. Nor drunkards. No, wait a minute. We talked about that earlier. It's okay for you to have a little sip every now and then. Start getting a little tingly, feeling a little good. Hey, it's okay. As long as you can control yourself. Yes, sir. You can't blame it on the alcohol. Make it plain, brother. Huh? Oh, well, Lord, uh, you know, Lord, uh, you know, I was, I got drunk a little bit last night, and I just, you know, it, it clouded my judgment. <laughs> it don't work like that, y'all. Teach. You can't blame it on the alcohol. He said, nor drunkards. Keep reading. Nor, rev nor revilers. That's right. Nor extortioners. Keep reading. Shall inherit the kingdom of God. Shall inherit the kingdom of God. Keep reading. As such were some of you. Pause. But ye are watched. Oh, oh, oh. Let's, let's, let's pause. <laughs> As such <laughs> were some of you uh -oh. and me. We was all there once. Now, I wasn't no effeminate <laughs> in Jesus' name. But we done done some of these things now. If you, as long as you can correct yourself, I ain't, ain't judging nobody. Because we already started off. Judge not that ye be not judged. As long as you have corrected yourself, you still a brother. And you still a sister in Jesus' name. Yes, sir. Right? It said, and such were some of you. But now we are what? You are washed. You are washed. But you are sanctified. And we sanctified. Now you're set apart. Keep reading. But you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. Amen. Now you washed. Now you set apart. You was that person before. But you got to keep being sanctified. You got to keep walking in the way. Teach, you brother. can't fall back. You got to endure all the way into the end. Even if it seems like it's a far off. We've been seeing the signs of the end for quite some time now, y'all. And I'm going to tell you, some people start getting weary all the long. Oh, it ain't coming back. You know, it's been going on. We've been reading about this stuff for quite some time. It's been earthquakes. Uh -huh. It's been rumors of wars for right. a long time. And people start getting a little weary. Yeah, they do. But then the Lord say, look, I'm going to come upon them. When they start thinking at a time where they're not worried about it, mm -hmm. like a thief in the night. Yes, sir. And I'm going to seep in, and then they ain't going to be ready. That lamp going to be put out, mm. and you ain't going to be able to light it no more. <laughs> but we got to look at some more stuff here, right? What are we denying ourselves from? Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. We're going to look at some more stuff. Galatians chapter 5. We're going to pick it up at verse 19. Galatians chapter 5. We're going to pick it up at verse 19. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read it. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. So now the works of the flesh, they are made known, which are these? Adultery. Adultery. We read that. Fornication. Fornication. We read that. Uncleanness. Uncleanliness. It covers a lot. Mm. Uncleanliness. It's a spiritual uncleanliness. What you thinking about? What you wake up? What's on your mind when you wake up? You praying when you first wake up to get your day started? Mm. You examining yourself? You done had a wicked dream? And now you just keep on pondering on that wicked dream? <laughs> Or you're going to rebuke that thing when you wake up out of that dream. Lord, thank God it was a dream in Jesus' name. <laughs> and pray. And ask God to, re to remove those type of things from you. Where you at? Uncleanliness. That's bodily uncleanliness. Are you trying to keep the, 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 uh, the cleanliness laws as best mm -hmm. you can? We know we're not in our land right now, but you got to do the best you can. Yes, sir. Do the best you can. 
Are you keeping the dietary law? Now, you can do that 100%. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that, you know, government and all that, they try to put things here and all, no, here and all there. But if you read labels and you know what pork is, you know what shrimp is, you can't eat it. You can keep that. That's uncleanliness. Where we at, brother? Finish that. In the 19. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. That strong sexual mm. desire. Yes, sir. You better get married. <laughs> huh? You got urges? Teach. You got things going on? You're burning down there? You better get married. <laughs> Take your time. Choose the right one in righteousness. Pray to God. Acknowledge the Lord in how many of your ways? All, your All ways. of your ways. And he'll send you the right one. Yes, sir. But if you got them strong sexual desires, lasciviousness, it'll get you cut off if you ain't married. Get yourself together. We're examining ourselves today. Y'all with me? Yeah. Verse 20, brother. Idolatry. Idolatry. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. You can't Hate. be palm reading. <laughs> oh, you know what, brother? Brother, you know, I drive past this psychic reading thing every uh -huh. single day. <laughs> I just, I'm just curious about it. You know, I want to go in here a little bit, see what they're talking about. The law say witchcraft, it covers all of it. Mm. You can't be zodiac sign or none of that. <laughs> it's over with. Make it plain, bro. The Lord is the dictator of your life, and he's the only dictator we got. Teach. Witchcraft, can't deal with it. Keep reading. Hatred. Hatred. If you're hating your brother or sister, you got to out with somebody, the Lord said go to him first. Mm. If they ain't going to hear you, go to the elders. You better fix it. You can't be hating nobody around here without no call. Huh? How you going to love God, which you ain't seen, and you're walking around seeing your brother every single day, every single Sabbath day, and talking about you love God? <laughs> Get out of here with that. Hatred. Variance. Keep reading. Read variance, bro. Variance. Variance. Keep reading. Emulation. Uh-huh. Wrath. Wrath. That's that fierce anger. You can't be walking around here swolled up all the time. What you mad about? Huh? Bro, get you some joy. Sister, go get you some joy. Good grief, you woke up this morning. You need something to eat? Huh? What's going on? Teach, brother. Teach. Let's go back to variance a little bit. Variance, you're always at all the differences with everybody. Man. Can't know You can't agree with nobody. Always some going. You always want to dispute something. Brother, the sister, the word is the word. I ain't going to dispute nothing with you. <laughs> if you don't disagree, you disagree with it, so be it. I'm just here to lay it on the table for you. Wrath. Emulations. Keep reading. Sedition. That's right. Heresies. Heresies. Keep reading. Envy. Envy. Murder. Murderers. Drunkenness. Drunkenness again. Revelings. Keep reading. And such like. That's right. Of the which I tell you before, and as, as I have also told you in time past, uh -huh. that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You're not getting in. You talking about you keeping the 10? Oh, brother, I've been keeping the 10. Sister, I've been keeping the 10 since... You know, since I came out the womb, raised up in that thing. I've been believing in Jesus since I was raised up, but you're fornicating. Mm. <laughs> you're hating everybody. Huh? Your mind is not right. You're always thinking about sex. You ain't thinking about the Lord. Hey, hey, get married. You better get married. See, most of us think that denying ourselves only comes with materialistic things fleshly things but we need to understand that we have to deny ourselves from anything that presents itself to be ungodly anything let's go over to second timothy chapter three y'all still with me yes sir amen in jesus name second timothy chapter three paul tells us to abstain from all appearance of evil 2 Timothy chapter 3, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 3, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. This know also that in the last days... 
perilous times shall come. And we in there. Keep reading. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. That's happening. Keep reading. Covetous. Uh-huh. Boasters. That's right. Proud. Blasphemers. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Unholy. Disobedient to parents. Now, you know, some of us, when we come into adulthood, we feel like we know a little bit more than our parents. And we want to start, you know, trying to urge them to, you know, do certain things. I'm going to tell you all something. It ain't no stipulation on obeying your parents. If you're an adult and you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s, whatever, and your parents are still, lead, uh, they still living, if they tell you to cut the grass and you're able to do that, you got to go cut the grass. <laughs> you got to be obedient to your parents. People come to you all the time talking about, well, you know, I think it's a better decision to do this and do that. Your parents raised you. The Lord set it up that way. And there's no stipulation if they were some bad parents or if they were some drug addicts before. Your parents are your parents. And you are to what in the commandment? Obey them. Obey them and honor them. Yes, sir. Because that's your mother and your father. Ain't no stipulation on that. Now, I'm going to get off my rant on that. Unthankful, <laughs> unholy, verse 3. Without natural affection. Without natural affection. Truth breaker. Uh-huh. False accusers. That's right. Incontinent. Keep reading. Fierce. Despisers of those that are good. Lord, keep reading. Traitors. Heady. High-minded. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Got to pause there. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. You have to deny yourself if the big football game is happening on the sabbath and it's the only time that you can make it and take off work and you've been wanting to go to this game or you've been wanting to see this sister in concert sisters or you've been wanting to go on this shopping spree or whatever it may be who comes first the lord the lord do lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Verse 5, read that. Having a form of godliness. Having a form of godliness, but, but what? But denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Got to get away from them. They faking the funk. Brothers and sisters faking the funk. Pray to God that it ain't nobody in here. But you can't fake the funk when you're in this walk. Somebody always watching you, yes, sir. whether it's your brother and sister that's in here, whether it's the outside world because you claim to be a Christian yes. and God is always watching you. Yes, sir. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Skip down to verse seven and read that. Ever learning. Ever learning. And never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You're ever learning and you're never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You have brothers and sisters get up in this thing. They always, they, they understand the core of the book. They reading it. They know it. They believed it at one point, but they ever, but they keep on searching for something that's not in here. They keep on trying to find something that's not in here. Having a form of godliness, y'all. Don't let that be you. Examine yourself. Let's go back to Galatians chapter 5. Let's go back to Galatians chapter 5. We're going to read one verse here. Let's see what Paul says here. Galatians chapter 5. We're going to read one verse, verse 16. Galatians chapter 5. We're going to read one verse, verse 16. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read it. This I say then. He say this I say then. Walk in the spirit. Uh-huh. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk according to the word of God, y'all. He said walk. He said walk in the spirit, which is the word of God, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The Lord says it is the spirit that quickeneth. Mm -hmm. This flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are yeah, life. Yes, sir. Walk according to the word of God. In Make the book plan, of James, brother. it says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So now we have looked at the type of mindset that we must have. We have looked at the things that we must deny ourselves from. But now what does it mean to be a servant? Let's go over to Second Corinthians chapter six. Second Corinthians chapter six. What does it mean to be a servant? 
See, when you're a servant of God, you're going to go through some things. We already read about Job. See what he went through. When you call yourself a servant, the Lord has to put the test on you. You got to get tested a little bit. Yeah, You're going to go through it. It's inevitable. Yeah. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. And then we're going to skip. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read it. We then, as workers together with him, uh -huh. beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. The Lord don't want you to receive this grace in vain. He already died for you once. Don't receive that blood for in vain. Don't just be walking out here for nothing. You got to have a purpose. You got to examine yourself with this thing. Don't let God, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, die in vain. He ain't going to die in vain because somebody's going to make it. Mm. And I pray to God, one of them is up standing right here and yes, in sir. here and all out there. Amen. In Jesus' name. He said, we then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. Skip down to verse 3, brother. Giving no offense in anything. Giving no offense in anything. Keep reading. That the ministry be not blamed. See, you can't give no offense for nothing. You got to be walking this walk with a clear mind. With your mind focused on God, you can't say nothing crazy. You can't be doing nothing crazy. You can't give offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. Mm. Don't kill God as a witness. Keep reading verse four. But in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God. That's right. Keep reading. In much patience. In much patience. In affliction. In affliction. In necessity. In necessities. In distresses. In distresses. Keep reading. In strife. In strife. In imprisonment. If you go to prison, keep in, reading. In tumult. In tumult. In labor. In labor. In watching. Keep reading. In fasting. Amen. Keep reading. By pureness. By pureness. By knowledge. By knowledge. By long suffering. By long suffering. Keep reading. By kindness. Uh huh. By the Holy Ghost. That's right. Keep reading. By love unfeigned. Keep reading, brother. By the word of truth. By the word of truth. By the power of God. By the power of God. Keep reading. By the armor of righteousness. Mm. On the right hand and on the left. Keep reading. By honor. By honor. By dis and dishonor. Listen, when you're getting honored and everything going good, you got to keep walking in dishonor. When people are talking about you and you're getting dishonored, guess what? You still got to keep walking. Yes, sir. Keep reading. By evil report. When people are talking evil about you. And good report. And a good report. Keep as, reading. As deceivers. As deceivers. And yet true. Now they listen. And they calling you a deceiver. That brother always trying to deceive you. That sister trying to deceive you. But guess what? You still true. You still walking according to the word of God. Skip what they talking about. Yes, sir. You make sure you are walking according to the word of God because you are examining yourself. Teach, brother. Where we at, brother? Verse 9. Read it. As unknown. As unknown. And yet well known. And yet well known. When you just taking out the garbage can around the church, <laughs> you still somebody. Yes, sir. We need you. When you're cleaning up the church, when you're baptizing, when you're cooking the food for the feast, whatever it may be. You are still needed and valued in the church. You may be unknown. Brother or sister may not know your name, mm. but you still got to walk according to the word of God. Yes, sir. It says, as unknown, keep reading. And yet well known. And are yet well known, keep reading. As dying. As dying. And behold, we live. We live, keep reading. As chasing. As chasing. And not killed. But you're not dead yet, keep reading. As sorrowful. Uh-huh. Yet always rejoicing. As sorrowful, but yet I always find the joy in it. I'm always thanking God and I'm going to find some joy in my walk because I'm still breathing and I still have an opportunity to make it into the kingdom. Yes, sir. As sorrowful. Yet always rejoicing. Keep reading. As poor. As poor. Yet making many rich. Amen. Keep reading. As having nothing. As having nothing. And yet possessing all things. And still possessing all things. So a servant, he or she must be blameless, overcoming afflictions, serving the Lord with all of your heart, soul, and mind, which is your whole being. Laboring in the house of the Lord, using your God-given uh, talents for him. 
So let's look at some of those talents. Let's go over to 1 Corinthians. Just flip right on back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Y'all still with me? Yes, sir. Using your God-given talents for him. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to look at some of these talents. We're going to pick it up at verse 4. I don't hear no pages. Go ahead and read it, my brother. Now, there are diversities of gifts, uh -huh. but the same spirit. There's many different gifts that your Lord can bestow on you, but it's the same spirit. Keep reading. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. But the same Lord. Keep reading. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Oh, everybody, y'all, we got all have a role to play in here. We all got a role to play in here. You have something to do, and it's important to make up the body of Christ. If A.V. don't put, don't stream this lesson, we ain't getting it out to the world. If the sisters don't help cook the food, the brothers bring food for the feast, we don't have food, we don't have food for the feast. If nobody comes around here and clean this building, it's filthy. How you going to ask the Lord for a new building if you can't keep the one you got clean? <laughs> Make it play, Think man. about it. Everybody has a role to play in the house of the Lord because it's the same God which worketh all in all. Mm -hmm. Verse 8, brother, skip down to verse 8 and read it. But to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. Hey Amen. Keep to, reading. To another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. Keep reading. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. By the same Spirit. Keep, skip down to verse 11 and read it. But all these work at the one and self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. He dividing to every man severally as he will. Keep reading. For as the body is one. For as the body is one. And have many members. And have many members. And all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. Are one body. Keep reading. So also is Christ. And that's how we make up the body of Christ. Because it's one body. Keep reading. Verse 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Amen. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles. That's right. Whether we be bond or free and have all been all made to drink into one spirit. It don't matter who you are, Jews or Gentiles. It don't matter because whether we are bond or free and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Verse 14. For the body is not one member. That's right. But many. But many. It's many members in this body. Again, when the Lord blesses you with these gifts, use them for the service of the Lord, for his benefit. Because yes, you don't want to end up like the servant that we're about to read about. Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. We don't want to end up like this servant here. Now, this is dealing, we understand that this parable is dealing with money. But we're going to pull some things out of this. Matthew chapter 25. The parable of the talents. Matthew chapter 25. We don't want to end up like this servant here. We're going to pick it up at verse 14. Matthew chapter 25. We're going to pick it up at verse 14. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read it. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country uh -huh. who called his own servants and delivered unto them is good. So if the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his, uh, his own servants and he delivered unto them his goods. Keep reading. And unto one he gave five talents uh -huh. to another two and to another one to every man according to his several ability and straightway took his journey. So the Lord is trying to show us something here. He said, look, I'm going to give one brother or sister five talents. I'm going to give another brother and sister two talents. And then, you know, I'm going to give another brother and sister one talent. According to your several ability, according to your measure of faith, whatever you can handle, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to bless you with it. Let's keep reading. Verse 16. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. Amen. He went to work. Keep reading. And likewise, he that had received two talents. He also gained other two. He went to work. Keep reading. But he that had received one. But the person that received the one talent, the brother or the sister that received that one talent, what did he do or what did she do with that? Keep reading. 
He went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. He done hid the Lord's money. Keep reading. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. So the Lord decided to come back now, and he finna discuss with you. What you done did with my money? What you done did with the talent that I blessed you with? Keep reading. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Uh -huh. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. You know, that brother or sister was happy, Lord. Shoot, you gave me five <laughs> talents. Hey, I done went out and I done got five brothers and sisters up here. Here you go, Lord. I done, made, I done gave you some gain on your return. Huh? <laughs> I'm, I'm happy about that thing. Happy to go see the Lord. Keep reading, though. Verse it, 21. His Lord said unto him, well done. Well done. Thou good and faithful servant. That's right. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Amen. Keep reading. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Enter thou into, jo into the joy of thy Lord. You done, you done did your job, brother. You done did your job, sister. Come on in here with some joy and gladness. Mm. So the same holds true with the servant that had two talents. Let's read verse 24 now. Skip down to verse 24 and read that. Then he which had received the one talent. We're back to that one and received that one talent. Keep reading. He came and said, Lord, I knew that thou, I knew thee that thou art a hard man. That's Paul now. He said now, <laughs> Lord, I knew that you was a hard man. Just like we understand that the Lord is a hard God. Yeah, he is. He is a hard God. You got to serve this God with all of your might. Because he has the ability to kill you physically. Yes, sir. Wake you back up and then kill you again yes, in the lake of fire. Yes, sir. He is a hard man. So you got to examine a hard God, should I say. Yes, sir. You got to examine yourself every single day. Because we already know that. Right? We understand that. If you don't do right, he's going to cut you off. Mm -hmm. So he said here, where we at, brother? In the 24, 24, right? Yeah. He said, the one that had the one talent, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, finish that. Reaping where thou hast not sown. Uh-huh. And gathering where thou hast not straw. Keep reading. And I was afraid. And you was afraid. Keep reading. And went and hid thy talent in the earth. Keep reading. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. Keep reading. What's the Lord, Lord say? His Lord answered and said unto him, thou wicked and slothful servant. Thou wicked and slothful servant. The wicked and slothful servant. Keep reading. Thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not. You already knew what I was about. Keep reading. And gather where I have not straw. Uh huh. Thou artest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. You better think about that. If the Lord giving you some God given uh, uh, talents, if the Lord is blessing you with finances and different things like that, you better count it up. You better count up the cost. You Teach, better make brother. sure you're doing something with that. Teach. You better make sure if the Lord giving you the gift of gab, he's giving you that mouthpiece, you better go tell somebody about this God. Mm. If the Lord is giving you the, bless, uh, the, the gift to cook, you better be cooking for that feast. Yes, sir. Everybody in here better be doing something. Mm. Should nobody be sitting on their hands. Why? Because we already know the God that we serve is a hard God. God. Make it plain, brother. We know that. These elders need some help in here. Everybody should be running mm. to help and give a helping hand. Better think about it. I already know what my God requires. Where were you at, brother? 28. Read it. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which have ten talents. He said, take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which have ten talents. Keep reading. For to everyone that has shall be given. That's right. And he that shall, and he shall have abundance. Uh-huh. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he has. He'll take it away from you. Keep reading. And cast ye the unprofitable servant. And cast ye the unprofitable servant where? Into outer darkness. Into outer darkness. Keep reading. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You better think about it. If you're sitting on your hands in here, you better think about it. The Lord done blessed you with something. The Lord done gave you something. I don't care if it's just taking out the trash. I don't care if it's sweeping up the building when they ever ask. I don't care if it's dipping somebody in that baptism pool. 
It don't matter if you're opening the door and being a greeter. It don't matter. You better be doing something for the house of the, for the Lord, in the house of the Lord, for the Lord. What Pop say on Friday? He say what? The word of the day is job. <laughs> J-O-B. <laughs> Get up off your hands and go to work. What else? That's it. Also, as a servant, we are to be good examples one toward another in righteousness. First Peter chapter 5. Hey, we got to have fun when we reading the word of God and we, and we teaching this word, right? We going through it. Got to have a little fun. Yes, sir. But it's serious. <laughs> First Peter chapter 5. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. J-O-B. <laughs> got to get up off your hands. You know who you are. Get up off them hands. Go to work. First Peter chapter 5. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. Because we need to be examples, good examples, one toward another. And if everybody's checking themselves, guess what? We're going to have a righteous body. Mm. First Peter chapter 5, pick it up at verse 1, my brother. When you get there, go ahead and read it. The elders which are among you, I exhort. I encourage you, brother. Keep reading. Who am also an elder. Uh-huh. And a witness of the sufferings of Christ. And also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Amen. Keep reading. Feed the flock of God which is among you. Feed the flock of God which is among you. Keep reading. Taking the oversight thereof. That's right. Not by constraint. Amen. But willingly. But willingly. Keep reading. Not for filthy lucre. Not for no money. Keep reading. But of a ready mind. But of a ready mind. Keep reading. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. But being examples unto the flock. To your elders and your teachers and your, and your pastors, they ought to be good examples of the flock. And you are too. We're going to keep reading. Keep reading. And when the chief shepherd shall appear. And when the Lord shall come back. Keep reading. Ye shall receive a crown of glory that faded not away. Amen. Keep reading. Likewise, ye younger. Ye younger. Keep reading. Submit yourselves unto the elder. Uh-huh. Yeah. All of you be subject one to another. And be clothed with humility. Be clothed with humility. Keep reading. For God resisted the proud. And give it grace to the humble. Amen. Keep reading. Verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. And that's so important. That is so important. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. So if you're walking around here and you think that you don't have a big job or, a, you know, the big duties or this or you're not standing up here, humble yourself. Humble yourself. This is a scary job. I didn't ask for this job, believe it or not, because I understand that I serve a hard God mm -hmm. and I understand what this comes with. You all have to understand that whatever you're doing for the Lord. Whatever it may be, do it with all of your might. Do it to the best of your ability, and the Lord will exalt you in due time. John chapter 12. John chapter 12. We winding down, y'all. Y'all still with me? Yes, sir. Let's go to John chapter 12. St. John chapter 12. We're going to read one verse here, verse 26. St. John chapter 12. We're going to read one verse here, verse 26. John chapter 12 and verse 26. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, he will, him will my father honor. Remember that. He said, if any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father mm -hmm. honor. Now, we have taken a look at the mindset we must have, and we know what we're up against. We've looked at denying ourselves and what it means to be a servant. So now let's transition into our last section here, the rebuild. Mm -hmm. All right? What do I mean by that? 
See, now we have to rebuild. We have to build ourselves back up to walk this walk. But how do we do it? The first thing that we need to do as servants of God, when you're, an exam when you're examining yourselves, you have to repent. You got to ask God to forgive you for the things that you have done in the past so that you can walk this walk with a clear mind going forward. Right. When you've been tested, you've been knocked down, you done fail. Right. Now you understand what you must do. You understand that you have a hard, This is a hard God. You understand you got to deny yourself. You got to repent and ask God to forgive you. Let's go over to Psalms chapter 51. We're going to look at David. And how he, after he made a mistake, ain't no sin worse than the other. That's all sin. Now it is some sin unto death, but hey, that's, that's, that's according to the Lord. Psalms chapter 51. Sin is sin. We're going to look how David repented unto the Lord after he made a mistake. Psalm chapter 51, we're going to pick it up at verse 10, and then we're going to skip. All right? When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. That's the first step. Create in me a clean heart, O God, a clean mind, and renew a right spirit within me. Skip back up to verse 1 and read it. Have mercy upon me, O God. According to thy loving kindness. He said, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. Keep reading. According unto the mercy of thy tender mercy. According, according to, the unto the multitude of thy tender mercy. Amen. Blot out my transgressions. Keep reading. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Mm, keep reading. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned. And done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. He say, for I he say, wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. This is something that we also have to understand. Against thee, thee only have I sinned. When you are committing sin and you walking around committing foolishness. And you in your flesh, you are sinning against God, your maker, the one that has created you to be just like him. And we have to acknowledge that so that we can we can move forward and begin to walk in newness of life. Where we at, brother? Verse seven. We we'll skip down to verse seven, brother, and read that. Amen. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me. Wash me. And I shall be whiter than snow. And I shall be whiter than snow. Skip down to verse 9 and read it. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. In Jesus' name. I pray that prayer. Mm -hmm. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. Skip down to verse 11 and read it. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Amen. Keep reading. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And uphold me with thy free spirit. Keep reading. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Amen. He say, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. See, sometimes when we're going through things, and it's, it's looking real dark and black right there, we get, we get real sorrowful. It get hard. It get real tough. And you have to ask the Lord to restore that joy unto you and realize what you're fighting for. Mm. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And then he said, then when I'm clean, Lord, then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Yes, sir. And when the Lord has forgiven you, he's healed you and he's delivered you. Don't forget about it. Let's go over to Deuteronomy chapter four. When the Lord has brought you out. Deuteronomy chapter 4, we're going to read one verse. When he's brought you out of that darkness and he done cleaned you up, don't forget about God. You got to serve him when it's good or it's bad. Don't forget. Deuteronomy chapter 4, we wind it down. Read one verse, brother, my, uh, verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 9. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read it. 
Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. He said, only take heed to thyself, because that's what we're dealing with today. And keep thy soul diligently. That means all the time you got to keep yourself in subjection to God. Lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen. Mm. The Lord has spared your life one way or another. At some point. The Lord has healed you from some type of illness. The Lord has showed you the truth and brought you out of a dark, sinful world. Don't forget about where the Lord has brought you from. Mm. Amen. Do not forget what the Lord has done for you. You might have been hungry. You might have been on the street. You might have been clothesless. The Lord has brought you out of something. Don't forget about it. Keep your soul diligently, lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them to thy sons and thy son's son. Tell everybody you can about this goodness of this God. Yes, sir. In Jesus' name. Amen. And how many of us meditate on this word? How many of us meditate on the word? You may not read every single day, but you better be meditating on this word every single day. Let's go over to Joshua chapter 1. We winding down. Joshua chapter 1. Y'all still with me out there? Yes, sir. Amen. We winding down. We are winding down, y'all. I thank you all for bearing with me. Joshua chapter 1. We're going to read one verse here. Getting in these one hit of quitters and we're going to get on out of here. Joshua chapter one. We're going to pick it up at verse eight. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Keep reading. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. How often? Day and night. Day and night. You shall be meditating in this word day in and every single night. Right. Keep reading. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Some of it. All. All of it. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Keep reading. For then shalt thou make thy way prosper. Uh-huh. And then shalt thou have good success. Amen. Praise God. And not only meditating day and night, y'all, you got to be studying this word. You got to pick it up. You got to dust your Bible off. And open it up and read it. If you don't know what to read, pick it up and start from Genesis and start reading. If that ain't working for you, pick it up in Proverbs. Get a little wisdom. Mm -hmm. If that ain't working, go to James. Read the book and ask the God that has made you, created you, your Lord and Savior to give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Mm -hmm. And he'll give it to you yes, sir. in Jesus' name. But you got to study this word. 2 Timothy chapter 2. And I believe we have three more after this. Second Timothy. Chapter two. We're going to pick it up at verse 15. One verse. One verse. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Wait a minute. Study to show thyself approved unto who? Unto God. Unto God. You're not studying for me. You're not studying for Elder Julius uh, Justice over here or Brother Jedediah. You are studying to show yourself approved unto God. Yes, sir. Keep reading. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. That's right. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. So now in this rebuild process, we've looked at repentance. You're going to repent. You're not going to forget what the Lord has done for you. You're going to begin to meditate in his word day and night, studying this word. And now we have to commit to it. You got to commit to serving God. You have to commit to doing these things on a daily basis. Mm. Let's go over to Proverbs chapter 16. Two more after this. Proverbs chapter 16. I pray to God in Jesus name that somebody has gotten something out of this lesson. 
Yes, sir. Amen. Proverbs chapter 16. We're going to read one verse here. Verse 3. Because you got to commit to this thing. It's an everyday walk. Proverbs 16, one verse, verse 3. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read it. Commit thy works unto the Lord. Uh-huh. And thy thoughts shall be established. See, you got to commit your works unto the Lord, and the Lord will establish your thoughts. The Lord will keep your mind in subjection to him. If you're going through things in your, in your, wor in your life, and you're always thinking on worldly things, and you can't seem to see the light, you need to check your works. You need to check what you're doing around the body. Check what you're doing around the, 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 the church. Check what you're doing outside of the building. Check your walk. Start looking at yourself if your mind is going crazy. Because the Lord is telling you if you commit your works unto him, he's going to establish your thoughts. And once it's all said and done, we'll be ready for this. Let's go over to Psalm chapter 26. Brother opened up with this here. Psalms chapter 26. Once it's all said and done, we'll be ready for this. Won't be afraid of this right here. Psalms 26, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Psalm 26, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read it. Judge me, O Lord. Judge me, O Lord. For I have walked in mine integrity. For I have walked in mine integrity. Keep reading. I have trusted also in the Lord. Therefore, I shall not slide. He said, I have also trusted in the Lord. Therefore, I shall not slide. Keep reading. Examine me, O Lord. Examine me, O Lord. And prove me. And prove me. Try my reins. Try my, my reins. And my heart. And look into my heart, my mind. Keep reading. For thy loving kindness is before mine eyes. That's right. And I have walked in thy truth. And I have walked in thy truth. Skip down to verse 7 and finish that. That I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving. And tell of all thy wondrous works. That I may publish with a voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous works. Wouldn't you want to have that testimony in the end? Yes, sir. Lord, I have walked in mine integrity. Examine me, Lord. Judge me, Lord, because I have walked according to your truth. In the good times, in the bad times, when I was getting, when I felt like everything was great, and when I felt like everything was crumbling. I still walked in my integrity according to your word. When my brothers was talking about me, when they was calling me all kinds of names, spitting in my face, talking behind my back, I still walked in my integrity. When you took my children away, Lord, when I lost my job, when I lost my house, I still walked in my integrity according to your truth. That is the testimony you want to have in the end. Judge me, O Lord, because I'm examining myself every single day. Let's go over to our last place, y'all. Because no matter what comes our way, no matter what we go through, you cannot let anything, nobody, separate you from the love of Christ. Let's go over to Romans chapter 8. This is our last place. And brother, I know it says uh, verse 35, but let's pick it up at verse 18. Okay. Romans chapter 8. We're going to pick it up at verse 18, and then we'll skip down to verse 35. Romans chapter 8. We're going to pick it up at verse 18, and then we'll skip down to verse 35. And this is our last place. Go ahead and read it, my brother. So then they that are in the flesh. Verse 18, brother. Oh, I'm sorry. Verse That's 18. Okay. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Listen at that. He said, for, the, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Mm. And you have to remember that. Whatever you're going through right now is nothing going to be compared to when the Lord come back and he changed this fleshly body into that godly body and have give you all power and you're walking on streets of gold and you can do any and everything you, you want to do, you desire, as long as it's in, uh, within righteousness. 
It's not going to be compared to what you're going through right now. Skip down to verse 35, brother, and finish it. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? That's a question. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Keep reading. Shall tribulation. Shall tribulation. Or distress. Or distress. Or persecution. Or persecution. Or famine. Or famine. Or nakedness. Or nakedness. Or peril. Or peril. Or sword. Or sword. Keep reading. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Keep reading. Nay, in all, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Keep reading. For I am persuaded. For I am persuaded. That not are you persuaded? Are you persuaded? You have to ask yourself that. I am persuaded that what? That neither death, that neither death, nor life, nor life, nor angels, nor angels, nor principalities, nor principalities, nor powers, nor powers, nor things present, nor things present, nor things to come, nor things to come, nor height, nor height, nor depth, nor depth, nor any other creature, nor any other creature shall what shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Examine thyself, ye servant of God. And with that, I thank you all for your time. Yes, sir. Sometimes, Lord, this life is wrong.